Welcome to the New Hope Baptist Church, a praying church, where the Rev. Roderick K. Green is our pastor. We thank you for choosing to worship with us today, Sunday, July 19th, 2020. We invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, New Hope Baptist Church Ann Arbor, and like us on Facebook at New Hope Baptist Church. During this current season, all of our in-person services and meetings have been suspended until further notice. We look forward to worshiping with you in person again very soon. Now come, let us adore him as we enter into worship with Pastor Green. Good morning, New Hope. We do greet you in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. It's good to see you virtually online as we make it through this pandemic. We ask that you continue to pray with the New Hope Baptist Church, that you pray with all the sick and the bereaved, pray for this nation, ask that you pray for this government. One thing I would like to remind the church that on the first Sunday, we will be doing a virtual communion service. We ask that you stop by the church if you're able to during the week from 10 to 3, and you can pick up your vial. Uh, so we'll be doing that for the next two weeks, but on the first Sunday, we'll be doing a virtual communion service, and we ask that you have your vial. I would also like to ask the church to pray for the family of John Lewis. I think as most of you know, he passed this weekend. He was a giant in the civil rights struggle. I actually had the privilege of meeting him some years ago, and he shook my hand. He asked me where I was from, and I told him I was from the Detroit area, and he told me he had family in Detroit. I think he has a brother in Detroit. So we're so grateful to God for the work that he gave in the service to his country and to humankind. Let us have a moment of silence in his behalf. God bless you. Thank you so much. At this time, we will be led in a reading of the scripture and a prayer by Reverend Clyde Moore. Good morning, church. Our scripture today is going to come from Romans, the 10th chapter, from 1 through 8. <clears throat> Brother, my heart desire and pray to God for Israel that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have the zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness, and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of, of righteousness. For everyone that believeth for Moses described righteousness, which is of uh, the law, that the man which does those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which in thy heart who shall descend into heaven, that is to bring down, bring down Christ, from, a, from above. For who shall descend into the deep is to, is to bring up Christ from the dead. But that said it, the word is night. The even in thy mouth and in thy heart that is the word of faith which is preached. That if Thou shalt confess with thy mouth and the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Let us bow our head, please. Our Father, which art in heaven, thou be thy name, thy kingdom come. Father, we come today because 
you live. Father, we come today because you let us rise this morning with a portion of health and strength. Father, I thank you for your love and for your kindness. Father, I thank you for your gift. Father, you have brought us from a mighty long ways. You have kept us throughout all generations. Father, you kept us. Father, I believe in your love and your kindness. Father, bless this church. Bring us all back together again, Lord. Because you in you, ne you didn't intend for us to wear masks with the beautiful face that you have given us. Father, bless these members of this church. Bless all the preachers. Bless my pastor that's bringing the word of life this morning. Father, I thank you for your gift that you keep on giving. Father, I thank you for watching over us last night as we slept in slumber. Father, I thank you for putting the food on our table, clothes on our back. Father, look in on our children as they start back to school. Help them get through this COVID-19. Father, we just thank you. And Father, I thank you for all the love and kindness that you have shown throughout the years. Father, we can't make it without you. Father, I thank you for this church. I thank you for all the members of the church, the deacons and trustees, the choirs and the organists and all the members, Lord. I can't thank you enough. And I thank you for my pastor. He's been so kind. He has brought us from a mighty long ways. He has kept us and kept the word in our minds, in our hearts. Father, I love you. I can't make it without you. You're everything to us. Father, I hope and I pray that one day we'll be able to come back in, in this building and serve you again together. Father, we need you every day. We just can't make it without you. And Father, as we leave this place, but not your presence, keep us. Go with us to stand by us. For we need you every day. Every day. And Father, bless them on their jobs. Bless them on their traveling. Father, keep us. Keep us. And Father, watch over all, all the members of this church. And Father, all the preachers, bless them that bring in your word today. Keep them and guide them. We can't make it without you. Your name, above all names, is bright. We never walk in darkness, always in the light. And we keep you in our hearts. In Jesus' holy name, we pray. Amen. <laughs>
God bless you. Let the church, let the virtual church say amen. If you know anything about God, about the God we serve, we know that he is a good God. God bless your hearts. We're so glad that you're with us this morning. And we certainly greet you in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank God for the service thus far. There is a word found in Acts in your Bibles, Acts chapter 15, verses 22 through 29. It reads as follows. Then pleased it the apostles and elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas, surname Barsabas, and Silas, chief men among the brethren. And they wrote letters by them after this manner, the apostles and elders and brethren in greeting unto the brethren which are of the Gentiles and Antioch and Syria and Cilicia. For as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words, subverting your souls, saying you must be circumcised and keep the law, to whom we gave no such commandment. It seemed good 
unto us being assembled with one accord to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men that have hazarded their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have sent therefore Judas and Silas, who shall also tell you the same things by mouth, for it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things. I'd like to speak very briefly about good to the Holy Ghost. Good to the Holy Ghost. When something is good to the Holy Ghost, the suggestion is that it fits in with God's plan, lines up with God's word, submits to God's will, sings praises to God's glory, uplifts God's name, edifies God's church, invites God's blessings. It is something so good that it can easily be said that it's good to the Holy Ghost. When something is good to the Holy Ghost, it has a 100% chance of success. When something starts out with the blessings of God, it's good to the Holy Ghost. I believe you may have heard me say more than once, I'm a strong believer that how something starts out is a great indication of how it's going to end up. When something benefits all who come in contact with it, you can believe that it's most probably and certainly good to the Holy Ghost. Whatever we're doing in life, it's a good thing to ask ourselves, is this good to the Holy Ghost? Is it pleasing unto God? Does it fit in with God's program? You know, God has a program, believe it or not. Does it line up with God's word? Does it submit to God's will? Is it uplifting to the body of Christ? In other words, is it good to the Holy Ghost? Instead, we find ourselves asking questions that may not have much value. Does this feel good to me? Church, you can't go by feelings. Feelings uh, mess you up. You can feel good one moment and feel bad the next. Amen? Feelings come and go. Their feelings are fickle. You can't trust your feelings. You might even ask, will this help me get over? I know everybody's trying to get over, get their hustle on. But they may, that may not be what God wants you to do. You might ask ourselves, will this make me look good? Will this help me get paid? Everybody trying to get paid. Will this cramp my style? Will this hurt my rep? Will this blow my cool? But the truth is, the only question that's really relevant is, is it good to the Holy Ghost? In other words, is it pleasing unto God? Does it have an aroma of righteousness? Does it have God's stamp of approval? 
is it good to the Holy Ghost? If we're honest with ourselves, everything we do has not been good to the Holy Ghost. Every place we've been, everything we've said, every thought we've had. We get caught up in things that have no business and not only not good to the Holy Ghost, but not even good for you and me. We make up our own minds about stuff. The Bible says there is a way that seems right to a man or a woman. Looks right. Feels right. Smells right. But it's just wrong. And the ends are the ways of destruction. We decide in our hearts we're going to do things our own way. And as a consequence, church, we get messed up. We get caught up with people who mean us no good. The habits we can't control. Going to places that we ain't got no business being there. In situations not to our liking or to our benefit. We find that we can't trust folk. Folk can let us down. And truth be told, we can't even trust ourselves. We can't trust our eyes. We find out that everything glitter Show ain't gold. Everything look good ain't good for you. We can't trust our ears. We listen to that smooth talk. You know, Bernie Madoff was in prison because he could talk smooth. He convinced a whole lot of folk that he could take a dollar and make you $10. You have to be careful about smooth talk. I remember when I was coming up, you used to have to have a strong rap. You could look like who done it and what for, but if you had a strong rap, you could get the ladies. That was a suggestion anyway. Amen. Can't trust your hands. Your hands will get you in a whole lot of trouble. Touching things you ain't got no business touching. Touching people you ain't got no business touching. Touching guns and drugs, bottles and money, things that can destroy us for the rest of our lives. We can't trust our feet, have us going out in the wrong direction. I can hear Al Green saying love and happiness, something that'll make you do wrong, make you do right. Make you come home early, stay out all night long. Feet can mess you up. We can't even trust our minds. Our minds will mess you up. I heard a preacher say, get your mind right. Our minds are out in left field somewhere. When we trust in the world and don't put our hope in Christ, we can get off course and get off track. The truth is we get in trouble when we don't ask if the things we're doing, the things we're planning, and the things that we hope to achieve are not pleasing under God. This world can mess you up. We can get caught up in stuff that can mess us up for life. And the things we do are not only good, not good to the Holy Ghost, but not good for our own well-being, not good for our health, not good for our minds, not good for our bodies, not good for our lives, not even good for our families. Because the truth is, the stuff we do affects the folk we love and the folk that depend on us. But if you're a child of God, when everything you do is good to the Holy Ghost, your life is blessed. And you can find that your life can be sweeter than honey. 
You'll find like the 23rd Psalm says, goodness and mercy are chasing you everywhere you go. And you dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Church, we got to stay in his will. Stay in his word. Stay in his church. And stay in prayer. And we'll find out that the things we do are good to the Holy Ghost. And good for you and for me. And in our scripture today, the great apostle Paul was doing what was good to the Holy Ghost. He was going around planting churches, preaching the word of God, and trying to encourage the saints in Christ. And some Judaizers were teaching false doctrine and telling the Gentiles that they needed to be circumcised in order to be saved. They had neglected the word of God which had been taught by Paul and they fell back on old teaching telling the new converts that they had to revert to the old way of circumcision in keeping the law. You got to be careful church going back to the old way when God has given you a new one. And they had reverted back to the old way because of the false teaching. Paul said that's old news because of Jesus and what he did on the cross. All we need is a hope in Christ. All we need is faith in God. All you need is the trust in the Lord. Paul said we're not saved by circumcision and we're not saved by the law, but we're saved by God's grace. And it's not just grace, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. He got the saints together and they prayed to the Lord and they asked for direction. I'm glad that when you can't find your way, church, you can always get down on your knees and pray. I know prayer changes things. It'll change situation. It'll change condition. And it'll even change you. The Bible says that when they got up from prayer, they chose Judas and they chose Silas. They chose men of God who weren't afraid to tell a dying world about a living savior. They chose men of God who weren't afraid to testify about what the Lord had done for them through that man from Galilee. They chose men of God who weren't afraid to risk their lives for the glory of God. So they sent letters to the church and greetings to the Gentiles and said it seemed good to us and good to the Holy Ghost to send these men who are going to tell you the real deal that Jesus saves and he saves completely. They said if you do what's right in God's precious sight everything would be all right. You see if it's good to the Holy Ghost you better know it's all right with God. If you stay in God's will, stay in God's word. Stick with God's church and stick with prayer. You'll find out that it's good to the Holy Ghost. Even Paul had to admit that he hadn't always done what was right in God's sight and was good to the Holy Ghost. He said, I find in my mind there's a war going on. He said, the good that I would. I don't always do everything I want to do. I don't always do the right thing. But sometimes wrong pops in my mind. Every time I try to go straight, look like I'm headed towards something crooked. Every time I try to think holy, he said, look like sin gets in my way. 
But I need the Lord to make it all right. Church, I don't know about you, but I know I haven't always done the right thing. I haven't always said the right thing. I haven't always been in the right place. I haven't always done what's good to the Holy Ghost. And I can say like Paul, I need the Lord to make it all right. But when it comes to Jesus, I'm glad everything he did was good to the Holy Ghost. When he came down from heaven's paradisical shores, it was good to the Holy Ghost. They asked a question, who will go and whom can we send? I hear Jesus say, hear my, send me. It was shown of good, good to the Holy Ghost when he was born in Bethlehem in a manger. The Bible says shepherds followed his star and wise men brought gifts and it was good to the Holy Ghost when he was baptized in Jordan's river. The Bible says the doves descended upon him and he heard a voice from heaven say, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. He said it was good to the Holy Ghost. When Jesus fed the multitude on the mountainside, he took a little boy's lunch and he blessed it and break it. He had two fishes and five loaves of bread, and he fed over 5,000 men and women. They came back with 12 baskets full of scraps, and it was shown up good to the Holy Ghost. When he went to a wedding, they had no wine. Jesus told them, said, get some water. They filled the pots. They filled with water. And Jesus transformed the water into wine. And when they poured out the wine, they gave it to the guest master. He said, y'all, usually you drink the good stuff first and save the worst for last. But this time, y'all save the best for last. It was good to the Holy Ghost. When Jesus climbed a mount with Peter, James, and John, they were there for prayer and God transfigured him before their very eyes. Peter said, Lord, Lord, it's good for us to be here. It was good to the Holy Ghost. When Jesus made the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak, it was good to the Holy Ghost. When he made the blind to see and he cast out demons, I'm telling you, church, it was good to the Holy Ghost. When he healed the sick and when he raised the dead, it was good to the Holy Ghost. But the goodest thing that God ever did that was good to the Holy Ghost, when Jesus climbed an old rugged cross, he did for me what no other power in heaven or earth could do. He climbed it one Friday afternoon. He climbed it for me and he climbed it for you. He climbed that old rugged cross on a mount called Calvary. He climbed an old rugged cross on a hill called Golgotha. They put a crown on his head. They pierced him in the side. They put nails in his hands. They put nails in his feet. He suffered. He bled. He died. Didn't he die? He died one Friday afternoon. He died. They call it Good Friday because he saved my soul on that Good Friday so many years ago. I'm glad he did it for me and he did it for you. They said he saved others, but he cannot save himself. They died. They put him in a ball tomb. He lay there all day Friday. He laid there Friday night. He laid there Saturday. And he laid there Saturday night. But Sunday morning, he got up. All power, all power, Holy Ghost power. 
power, saving power, redeeming power, atoning power, healing power, awesome power, heavenly power, all power in heaven, heaven and in earth. And it was shown up good, 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 good to the Holy Ghost. It wasn't just good, but it was him good. So good, he put clapping in my hands, he put running in my feet. It was so good, he put joy in my soul and love in my heart. It was good, I am good. A long time ago, I found out that God is good. Ain't he all right? He's all right. Won't he heal your body? Won't he save your soul? Won't he deliver you from hell? I'm glad he got up. All oh, power, all oh, power. Ain't he all right? His name is Jesus. You can't tell me that God ain't good. He's a good God. He's a good God. He's a good God. He saved me. He saved me. He saved me. Love lifted me when nothing else could save me. Love saved me. Brought me out of the world into the sanctity and beauty of his church. It was good. So good. So good to the Holy Ghost. Thank God for Jesus. He's good. Somebody here knows he's a good God. Sweeter than honey. More precious than diamonds. His name is Jesus. We're going to open up the doors of the church virtually and invite someone to come to Christ. You can call the church office, 734-994-4620. Tell them you want that good thing called Jesus. Tell him you want that was good to the Holy Ghost. Tell him you want to be saved by the precious life-saving blood of Christ. That's all you got to do. We'll pray for you and ask that the Lord will become your personal Lord and Savior. God bless your hearts. This is my message of the cross. I can see so much, so much, so much that the Lord my God has done for me. I can see.
your hearts I don't know about you but I can see so much so much so much what the Lord my God has done for me if you can't get happy on that song I don't know what's gonna take oh I'm just thinking about that woke me up this morning me on my way. I'm trying to cool down church, but he's been so good to me. Brought me from a mighty, a mighty long way. God bless you. We thank you for joining us this morning. We ask that you, if you can, join us on Wednesday for our Bible study at 630. The information is on our website. And also, at the end of this program, you'll see it on the screen. We ask that you continue to pray for the church, pray for the bereaved, the sick, and the afflicted. Pray for this nation. Pray to here continue to protect us from this COVID-19, this coronavirus, that the Lord will continue to be a fence all around us, protect us from all hurt, harm, and danger. Until next time, be safe, be strong, be encouraged. Let us look to the Lord. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for what our ears have heard, what our hearts have felt, what our eyes have seen. Lord, we need you during these troubling times. We need you to protect us, to keep us, to watch over us. Thank you, Father, that there is a church on Chapin Street. Thank you, Lord, that we have a Savior. His name is Jesus. Father, if it be thy will, bring us back virtually into the house of prayer. This is our prayer. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless your hearts. We pray this service has been a blessing to you today. We invite you to join us on Wednesday evening at 630 for our Bible study conference call at 712-432-0075, access code 317-516. We ask that you not announce yourself upon entry, and please mute your phone if you're not speaking. Please consider supporting this ministry through online giving at www.nhbc-aa.org or the Give Plus mobile app. You may also deliver your gift Monday through Friday, 10.30 a.m. until 1 o'clock p.m. at the New Hope Baptist Church, 
218 Chapin Street in Ann Arbor. Until we meet again, be safe, be strong, be encouraged. May God continue to richly bless you is our prayer. Pastor Green and the New Hope Baptist Church.